Hello and welcome. It is six o'clock and it is the oh, six o'clock club. And that is not what we wanted to see. Uh, it has all gone wrong straight away. Uh, let us try this and let us try this. Um, boom, boom, boom. There we go. That is much better. Hiya, Kyle. I was having a moment there, and of course, because I have resized everything, it is all over the place. Professionalism at its best. There we go. Perfect. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the six o'clock club. It is six o'clock and it is Wednesday. I am pleased to have all of that information in front of me. Uh, tonight, we've got extra, extra people. We have, of course, Christian, and we've got Matt joining us as well. Um, <clears throat> introduce yourselves. Uh, we'll start off with you, Matt. Uh, hello, I'm Matt, uh, uh, writer, uh, playwright, and general games enthusiast, uh, working with Andy on a number of projects and uh, some of my own projects as well. Excellent. And, of course, Christian. <laughs> I'm Christian. As some of you may know, I've never been called professional in my life. Um, and I guess I'm hit from here, the Six O'Clock Club. Hello, everybody. Hope I'm, you're all well. I'm Andy from Twisted Narrative. Uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. So we've got um, quite a busy show tonight. Um, we are going to talk about tonight's game, which might or might not happen. But I'm going to give a name check anyway, and I'll tell you why. We'll do this as we're waiting for people to join chat. Hi, Akara. Thanks for joining us, by the way. So tonight's game is Fortunes Untold, a fifth edition um, set in Faerun. That's the Forgotten Realms. Um, but unfortunately, one of the players has succumbed to fever. Um, supposedly, it's just the flu, but flu can be terrible. Um, and they are struggling at the moment. So on tender hooks to see whether it's going to fire tonight or not. So James, get well soon. And the other players, Felicity, Roz and Adrian, we'll, we'll see. Hey there, Ian. Thanks very much for joining us as well. Um, so I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time talking about a game that might or might not happen. I will fill you in with all the details tomorrow if it does we've got plenty of other things to chat about tonight um so what's on tonight first and foremost we're going to chat to matt about his kickstarter which launched yesterday and it's going very very well and then once we've once we've had a little bit of a chat about that uh, we're going to address elsa's question that she posted in our discord earlier today and that is uh, Elsa's long-time player, been playing many, many different systems, uh, but was curious about advice for running a game, being a dungeon master, games master, storyteller, keeper, uh, whatever your flavour of, um, uh, of of um, of one of those things, really. Um, so, and there's quite a lot to cover with that. So it should, I mean, it should be quite interesting. And as usual, um, this is going to be a round table. It's going to be all our different opinions and advice, some of which, mainly mine, you can screw up and throw out because you, you don't like it. Some of it might actually be useful. Who knows? Indeed, who knows? So across to this gentleman above me here. Uh, Matt, um, oh your Kickstarter. Uh, we covered it slightly earlier. I'm going to call up the artwork first and foremost, see if I can actually make that work. Tonight. I'll stick the link in the chat. Yeah, so Remnants, a record mm. of the broken world, uh, went live yesterday, and I'm, I'm really, really loving that, that artwork. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, I will tell you why I really like it. <laughs> so, tell us about it. So, uh, Remnants is uh, it's what's known as a solo journaling game. So, it's uh, solo, you play alone. Um, and as a game, the, it functions as um, 
in playing you create journal entries um so basically the the game itself gives provides a, a world setting of the, the broken world and it's a world in which um a terrible catastrophe has kind of decimated the landscape and so the world has almost fallen into um it's an, an outdated term now i suppose but it's sort of a it's kind of this nuclear winter type landscape and um so, so the idea is that three years or a few years before the start of your journal um alien giant creatures descended on the planet and basically started fighting or continued fighting a war that had been raging between them for ages and just landed on our world as a battleground so it's very much kind of um the planet's been decimated by this event that had nothing to do with us and after they'd used our world as a battleground and then moved on uh we were left behind um but humanity is starting to recover in this frozen landscape and so you in remnants you are a traveler who is um, making your way across the landscape and you draw cards you play by using a deck of cards you draw cards to get different prompts for what happens in the process of your journey that day and how you go about um and how you record that is how you play the game effectively um, now, so, yeah, mean, so it's guided storytelling in a way it's fascinating because obviously I'm very, very familiar with um, choose your own adventure games, you know, fighting fantasy, which is traditionally what they're being called. Uh, Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone. Um, I grew up with them. Um, yeah. So ha- th- this is not the same, though. Um, is it? No. So so basically the 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 sort of the structure of the writing and entry is effectively there are five steps. Um, and uh, I, I return to my handy proofreading printout that I've got in front of me. Um, so effectively, you so for and each step you draw a card. Um, so you have here is a very very rough uh, printout uh, prompt. Uh, my one of my demo copies. Um, and so there are five stages um, to each entry, which is the first you draw. Uh, it's just it's played with a set of a deck Standard of playing, playing cards. cards, yeah. Um, and so, for the first draw, you establish how setting up camp went. And so, depending on what you draw, you get a prompt which says, you know, and that, and they range from you have shelter and a fire, you're perfectly safe, or you've been given shelter at a settlement for the evening, or you've got no shelter, you've got no fire. Uh, so it's quite a bleak evening. And then, then you. Um, there's a you draw again to see what the weather's been like for the day, and then you draw again to see uh, get some ideas of events that have occurred during your travels from the day, and they may be something to do with a person, a place, a location, a creature, a thing you found, a thing you saw, and so each and each kind of um, card draw, depending on the suit, depending on the number, gives you a different prompt, and then you respond to that prompt in writing the journal. Um, and so it's kind of it can be as long or as short as you like. You can write three sentences or five sentences for each journal entry, or you can write hundreds and thousands of words per per entry as you see fit. It's it's kind of a and the prompts are as open ended as possible to allow you to tell your story and your story of this journey through this world that you're exploring, um, and you have the scope to make it as epic and broad scoping and important as you want it to be or as gentle and calm and relaxing as you want it to be because it's um it's it's quite storytelling for yourself um and it's something that you can share with other people and you can kind of pass on the journal to others or you can keep it and just make it very much your own thing no it's it's fascinating um stuart has said that my mic is quiet is it quiet for everybody else, or does Stuart need to take cheese out of his ears? I know he's very fond of keeping them, <laughs> uh, keeping Brie Dam in uh, in his ears. Um, so let me know in chat if I am super quiet. My volume is turned up, but I don't know. Um, if it, it's fascinating, I, I I've I've backed it. Um, it I mean, me too. It's a no-brainer, really. It looks great fun, and uh, for for the money that you're asking, um, it's you know, um, I mean, I don't really want to say this, but I would have paid more for it. 
I, I, well, I, yeah, I, no, no, it looks good. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I might get it and go, well, this is, this is trash. What, why have I brought it? But at the moment, the promises are there you know. and, and it, it, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is what you yeah. get at the six o'clock club, the, the good, the bad, you know, um, um, but no, I mean, it is, it is pretty much a no brainer and I'm intrigued because I've never done anything like this before. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm very keen to uh, to give it a bash, really. Um, so all you yeah. need, sorry to interrupt, <clears throat> all you need is a, a journal, playing cards, and the book. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah, so, you can, you and can... yeah, and then with the added option of a coin to flip if you want to. So basically, the oh, okay. um, the the way that the so there's a there's a worked example on or a sort of a play test example on the campaign page as well, where you can see. Um, I, I do an example of the five cards that I drew and the the uh, entry that I wrote in response. Um, but the the kind of the added mechanic of the coin toss is just um, the as to give you an example of one of the prompts. They're they're pretty open as to how you interpret them. So, for example, um, travel events. So events during the day. If you draw the five of hearts, your prompt is you passed a traveling trader and that's the prompt um and so that situation goes however you feel it goes but if you want to kind of give yourself a bit of a steer you you toss the coin and if it's a heads uh, heads is positive tails is negative so it's okay, it's just yeah. a if you want to have a suggestion of well was this good was this bad then it's there as an optional mechanic if people want to use it excellent um, really? so so yeah coin is very much optional um but yeah it is just a deck of cards something to write on and then uh the the booklet itself whether that's a digital version or, or a, a physical version i'll have um, to uh, i'll have to go to the bank <laughs> <laughs> everything's cashless for me now yeah no yeah. it's uh I, I can't wait to see it and um uh the the art who basically uh you didn't do this yourself there's a couple of creators that came yes so with you. yeah i i so i did the 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 words and the mechanic of the game itself um, came from my brain, but I can't draw for Toffee, um, and which is a shame because I love Toffee, and I've got no chance of getting it for drawing. But um, no, my uh, so the artwork is being done by uh, so here's an example. Here's the kind of one of the first concept pieces, um, and is actually my niece Jenna, who is uh, she's in her final year at university. She's already a um, I think she's. I, well, she, I don't know if she's a published artist, but she's certainly got had a number of things in uh, in on display across uh, uh, her home city. Um, and she's ridiculously talented, and it's baffling, um, some of the stuff she produces. And so the, the concept piece that she came up with was produced after a chat about it and reading the short story that the game was born out of. Um, and she kind of just captured everything about the game and the world that it's set in so beautifully. So, so yeah, so that's my incredibly talented niece. So it's really nice to be able to work with her as well, because this is the first time we set about doing something, a creative project together loads of times. And But this is the first one we've managed to kind of go, well, this is a thing. Let's do a thing. So um, I might have missed her so name. Really what was the name? Sorry, it's Jenna Beams. Jenna Beams. Okay. Yeah. Um, can I ask then, about, oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead. No, I was just. Uh, it was the, another person on uh, the other person in the creative team is my uh, a friend and uh, common collaborator is uh, Hannah Torrance, who is doing the design and layout part of the book itself. So, and she is very very cool and great. She does a lot of. Um, she's a playwright as well. Has does a lot of writing for theatre and storytelling. Is also an avid gamer and plays D and D um, in the campaign that I run um, and a number of others and. Um, yeah, so so that's kind of the, it's the, us as a, a trio of creatives pulling this thing together. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. Sorry, Christian. No, I was I'm going to ask about because uh, it's it's part of a what looks like a season of things or a month of things on Kickstarter called Zine Quest, and I was going yes. to ask what Zine Quest is. So Zine Quest, I am relatively new to the idea of Zine Quest, and the fact that Zine Quest exists is the reason why Remnants exists as a Kickstarter this month and not with significantly more planning. Um, because uh, Remnants didn't exist a month ago. I was in Sainsbury's car park thinking about us. I wrote a story a few years ago called The Sheltering Bones, which was set in the world of uh, the game. 
And I've always liked that world. And then I had an idea in as I was leaving, having bought shopping, I randomly had this idea of, well, this would work as a journaling game. And here's how you do it. And in the way that these things usually do, when you had an idea that's really strong, it all just pours out in one go. So then I did it. And I didn't do it for any reason other than, oh, I wonder if it will work. I wonder if I could turn this into a journaling game. So I did it and kind of got a very rough draft done in the, about a day and a half. And then looking into it and showing it to a couple of my friends, then discovered that Zine Quest is a thing that happens. So basically, Kickstarter every year so, uh, kind of encourages people to create uh, small gaming RPG style projects that are all kind of inspired by the gaming zines that used to be published in, I think it was in the 70s, you used to get these little kind of paper zines, which were just little supplements and little tabletop role playing games. And they were either systems or adventures and stuff like that. Um, and so kind of in homage to that, they spend an instant, they every February, I think it's, I think it changed to the summer last year, but it's been February since. And I think they're returning to February, but basically they kind of encourage everybody to do in the month of February, take part in zine quest. So this is the month you produce your random tabletop project and you do. So there are as well over, I think there's nearly 2000 projects that have got the zine quest badge on them. Um, and so that was what prompted Remnants to become a Kickstarter quite so randomly and quickly. Oh, yeah. No, it's yeah. uh, it's it's very good. Um, mm. And I recommend people go check it out. Um, it is. It is up to you where you decide to spend your hard-earned money. Um, Absolutely. But we can point you into certain directions, and that direction is that way. Um, but before we, we move on to the, the topic of the night... I kind of just want to mention about the artwork, the, the reason why it's so um, evocative to me. It reminds me, it's it's very difficult to do line artwork that is sort of monochrome or sort of two-tone in colour uh, and, and make it work. And it the image really, really works for me. And it's very reminiscent of... I'm old, <laughs> very reminiscent of the old kind of uh, Lovecraftian and, and Tolkien-esque kind of artwork that that was all in the books that I I read as a as a younger person, um, uh, and I don't know whether it's been deliberately designed to sort of capture that or or not. No. <laughs> What's brilliant, and one of the reasons why my talented niece is so great, is we had a conversation in a coffee shop about it. I gave her a copy of the short story that um, she'd read previously, which had sort of inspired the world. I gave her a copy of the, the working draft of the game. Um, and I talked to her about a couple of things visually that had inspired that I was having in my brain. Um, uh, and those were some of the um, Choose Your Own Adventure artwork and uh, sort of the fighting fantasy novel artwork that you'd you'd see like from the books that are on my shelf over there yeah. that, that shelf there is full of uh, um all the fight, fighting fantasy and lone wolf um lone wolf. games and stuff like that um and then the other thing that was really strong in my head was um nausicaa of the valley of the wind yeah um, no, the no, film absolutely. by Hayao Miyazaki. And what's lovely about that is he's illustrated that there's a comic version, or it was originally a manga, which he fully illustrated. Yeah. And that style of artwork was very much in my head. And kind of particularly the giant warriors in there are, are a big inspiration on the god giants yeah, yeah. as kind of this entity in this in this world. Um, so I sort of talked about all of that. And I said, I'll, I'll pull together a bunch of images and I'll send you a load of stuff. So I did. And I sent it to her. But before she'd even looked at it, she'd drawn that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's, 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 and it, it, it uh, sort of yeah. holding up to camera doesn't do it justice. If you go to the Kickstarter, you, you'll actually see the, 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 the proper copy. I mean, I, yeah. I would imagine the original you've got is actually better than the, the, the copy, but just holding it up to camera doesn't do it. 100%. No, it doesn't, doesn't the, give it the justice that, that it needs. And it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. And, and is that the original size of it as well? Cause that's, that's remarkable as well. If they, did they do it? What, what was the size of the original? 
Uh, oh, this. I mean, this is th that's, um, it's, that's this is the yeah. yeah so this was uh, so she did an initial sketch, and then she's sort of painted with watercolor, just yeah. very just to give the highlight and the detail on the initial sketch. So it's an A4 ish, um, yeah. nice thick art note paper notebook type yeah. paper. Um, I, yeah, so she's I'd, done I'd, that. I'd, and then... I'd I'd get that framed and secured away so that when she becomes oh, yes. very very famous. You can retire by selling like one of her, quite possibly what you're saying, first published work, an original. 100%. Yeah. See, I see. Yeah. I, do, I do this. Um, <laughs> now, truly, I, I, I wish you 100% um, success with it, really. It's it's like, it's over half funded in a day and a half, two days, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I, we're I on. I sort of checked it up. It's currently sixty eight percent, which is bonkers um and brilliant. And if I know some people who are part of the twisted narrative community have already backed, and I'm really, yeah. really grateful. Thank you very much for that. No, and no. yeah, it's um hopefully it will get over the line and and if it goes, um, I, there's a few stretch goals on the campaign. I've got aspirations for lots of I've you know um, Jenna and I have both been thinking of ideas and things that we would like to do. She's very excited about the idea of doing a, a bespoke card deck for it, but that's very much a if it gets really really well funded, we can look at that because yeah. unfortunately you have to you've got to produce the things before you can sell the things. So it's, it's an expensive but, yeah. thing to do, but it would be it is, beautiful. But, it would be amazing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll get there and it'll be really lovely to see it as a thing and produce. And, and we've had lots of nice feedback already from people on on the campaign, campaign yeah, page yeah. just liking the idea of it. And so, yeah. Perfect. No, amazing. Uh, I wish you every success with it. I'm sure it will be. Thank you. Um, um, okay. Let us come on to our subject of the day, which was also posted in our Discord and as i mentioned earlier it was advice for new dungeon masters basically i'll use the term dungeon master it could be a game master or storyteller or keeper or whatever um and we were we were having a little chat the three of us before we went live and um i certainly suffer from this a lot in terms of because I run so many games and I've been running games forever. Um, you become, it becomes second nature. And when people ask you for such advice, you kind of have to think carefully about actually, what do you do? How do you do it? And you, you don't want to sound sort of patronizing either uh, because a lot of what is most important is the simplest of things. Um, but I'm also, um, hello, can you hear me? Uh, I'll bring it around there so people can hear me. Uh, Ian is saying I'm sounding quieter now. Um, all the technical issues tonight. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, hopefully I am better now. Um, um. Uh, this is this is going to be our best stream ever because it's been so chaotic and things <laughs> haven't been set right. People can't hear me and everything else. Um, so so yeah, it, it, it it's an interesting question because it's made me sort of dig deep and, and think hard about what's the best advice to give to new dungeon masters. Um, uh, I I, th I think we'll we'll take it in turns. Um, so uh, I'll start. I'll start. Um, I think most importantly, it's having the right table, and by that I mean you want to play with people that want to play the game that you are running, rather than want to play with people that don't want to play in that game or having people that have got different expectations from said game if everybody's working together then it's 100 percent easier and that is the majority of the work done because everybody is there for the same reason 
uh, and it, uh, that sounds very simple advice, uh, but it's why session zeros are important. Uh, because people's expectations of what is what is Dungeons and Dragons, or what is Pathfinder, what is Alien, um, what is Vassen, or whatever game that you are running, it can be completely different. Um, so one assumes, unless you're running a pickup game or um, a game at a convention, you're playing with your friends anyway. But it's still, I think, important to have that session zero sit down with everybody, go, I've got this concept for this game. Uh, is everybody on board? What What are you thinking about this game? And do your traditional Session Zero stuff as well. Has anybody got any phobias, lines and veils, safety measures, even amongst sort of friends? Uh, but most importantly, cover things like, is this going to be player versus player? Or is there going to be any player versus player content, etc., etc., and that that just negates any of that bad feeling that can build up when someone sort of is playing a rogue tries to steal something from uh, another one of the player characters. Um, so that that is my first point. Session zero. It can be very light. Can be very. It can be quite good fun, especially if you're playing like the game that we were chatting about last night, Blades in the Dark, where a session zero is you building your characters and building the crew, and creating the uh, the background. Uh, but get everybody around the table, working together first and foremost. That is my first piece of advice. Who wants to go next? Should we go clockwise, Christian? Okay. Yep, that's fine. So I'm actually going to address the where's a good place to start part of Elsa's uh, part of Elsa's message, which is <clears throat> should I follow a campaign book? Um, is there a good place to start without making the kind of mistakes that cost friendships? Well, you, you, you've already covered partly the first thing I was going to say, which is choose your players carefully. So a good place to start as a complete novice gem is normally where you feel comfortable which sounds a bit weird so either you go with the system you really know well as a player which is generally good advice um one you enjoy running one you think this this will be fun for me to run or one you think i like to play that one i'd like to learn the rules and then you can develop your your skill with it and and i would say with with kind of the adventure Following campaign book is a really, really great way to start. I mean, loads of adventures start from Lost Minds of Fandelver in the, in the D and D world, or you know, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. And in those books, it gives you a lot of what you need. There's a lot of space for you to add your own stuff, but it gives you a lot of what you need. So, I mean, what actually a really good collection is is um, I've got behind me the Candlekeep Mysteries, and that that again, I'm, I'm very D and D heavy because that's where all the adventure books I've got are. Um, but it gives you quests for each level. Uh, uh, just a small sort of adventure for a party. All you need to run it, all the maps, all the uh, uh, where you can find the stats for everything. And it's it's a good introduction. And the idea is that you read it all through, kind of take it all in so you know where it goes, and then you can run it. Don't just, just open it and read it, but, you know, take it in, run it. That is a really good way. But if you think th the way I started was I knew the Forgotten Realms really well. So I picked that as a campaign setting and then went, that's that's where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm gonna GM from that world because I know it really well and know some of the towns and I had an idea of of, of some quests because I'd borrowed them from media I had seen. <laughs> Um, but you know, I, I built quests around that and around the, the themes and things like that. And 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 you know, my players kind of in they, they enjoyed it and you know. That sort of thing, but there's a load of great places to start with existing adventures, and a lot of the the systems come with adventures already that you can run for for new GMs and new players. So I'd really, really strongly recommend that. And reading the section of the book that you don't often get to, which is the storyteller's help or the GM guide or whatever, there's really good advice. And and finally, on that point, Reddit has a load of good subreddits that help dm academy is is one i frequent re regularly to learn advice and youtube channels as well Ginny d 
has a great amount of advice out there for new GMs about how to get into it and 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 for your first session. So that's 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 my that's my advice to start with, uh, Matt. Hmm. Um. I'm still relatively green in the sense of, I mean, I've been GMing or GMing for, blimey, that's terrifying, a couple <laughs> of years now, but it's been very much a group and I did not, um, I was intimidated by the idea of campaign books. So I thought, I'll just make up my own world. That'll be easier. <laughs> no, it's not. It can be. But also there's lots of stuff that's already there for you in a campaign book that's not. Um, none of this is helpful. I apologize. No, I think, I think actually <laughs> ha- having your having your view as a newish gem is is incredibly valid. Um, I mean, what kind of things would you have liked to know? What kind of things have you learned? I think um, one of the things that struck me because obviously um, my sort of professional background is theatre and writing and storytelling. Um, and there are so what's lovely about and one of the reasons why tabletop role playing in general appeals is because it's it's collaborative storytelling, which is what improv is, which is what device theater is. So it's it's like it's great. It's home away from home, which is wonderful. Um, and so I think one of the key things that I've learned and I think I would say to somebody starting out is it's something very similar to what I would say to people who are trying to tell a story for the first time because that's what you're doing Mm -hmm. is there are there are plenty of ways to tell a story um there is no one right way of doing it there are lots of right ways of doing it but the most important one to try and find is your way of doing it and i think when it comes to being a gm be the games master and the storyteller that you want to be and tell help create a story and help your players tell a story that you love and you enjoy and that they will love and they enjoy because i think that's that's where the joy of the game comes from not from the this idea of you know i'm the dm i'm supposed to try and kill my players in every session i i do not subscribe to that as a philosophy because i don't think it's fun I don't want to sit out and try and kill my friends. I want to give my friends every opportunity in the world to be really, really awesome and also to fail spectacularly and learn from that and grow. And they grow as individuals, their characters grow. All of those things, that's what being a GM lets you do with your players, working with your players. Um, so I think, yeah, as a, as a first bit of advice would be kind of tying into what um, you've both already said in that it's find a world that you that resonates with you and a story or the the seed of a story that resonates with you and the players that you've gathered around the table and i think if you're enthusiastic about it and you're excited to see what happens yeah be excited and open to whatever happens yeah i I think um that is absolutely 100 percent, and kind of leads me into what i was going to say next uh which is I mean, firstly, on the point that you said, you know, as long as everybody around the table is of the right mind, as I said in my first point, it doesn't matter whether it's kind of more akin to a war game where, you know, characters are dying left, right and centre, because that is the experience that both the GM and the players want. If everybody wants to be a free form game that is just role playing again, that's perfectly valid as long as everybody around the table sort of wants that, which is why it's critical to have those conversations at the start of it is going to be this kind of game, or I want to run this kind of game. Are you on board with it? Um, but, moving into that you know having having passion and a desire to be at the table with those players is critical um and that's my second point really which is enjoy it um 100 you are a player too you're not a player character but you're a player around the table if this was just a board game you would all be of of equal and you are all of equal. So it is just as important that you as a storyteller are having fun um, 
as the pl as as the other player characters are um and that will make you enjoy the game which means that you'll be passionate about it which means that the other players will be engaging and seeing your enthusiasm for it and hopefully it's infectious and everybody builds on everybody else and the simplest way of putting it is cooperative storytelling uh, we covered this very briefly yesterday when we were speaking about blades in the dark which is the storyteller should be a fan of the the player characters um, really uh, sort of in my opinion the way that i kind of run it around the table they should celebrate their successes and mourn their defeats um, if you were directing a movie the way that a gm would be doing you wouldn't actively unless it was for story purposes sort of try and make all of the protagonists the main characters in that movie suffer all of the time it, it just wouldn't be a good movie to go and watch um, and storytelling whether it's through cinema through theater or around a table needs to be fun for everybody so enjoy it remember that you are a player also and let that passion sort of roll across is my second sort of point really um christian have you got a, have you got a second yes point? oh of course i do um <laughs> i could talk for hours on this but i won't um and actually this is a very practical piece of advice a very very practical piece of advice but again going back to um Elsa's uh, uh, post in the in the Six O'clock Club channel in, the, in our Discord server. Mm -hmm. um, please come along and join us if you haven't already. Um, how do I avoid making everyone wait ages when you don't know? And this is general advice for approaching any session as a GM, but certainly advice that that I learned very quickly after my very first session running um, many years ago, and that was that was to be prepared um and you you are and i don't don't mean you need to know every everything that the work is going to happen in the world you know every every finite detail you don't always you don't need to know that and you know sometimes you can make it on fly sometimes the tables but it's having information to hand that you might need so you're running a campaign in a modern day setting generate a pre-gen a load of names you're running in a fancy setting, pre gen a load of elves, dwarves, whatever. Generate a load of names and just have them there and cross them off once you've used them. When I started gemming, I, I built, I had this, this purple folder that had lots of printouts I got from the internet of like different shops and what they sold. And this was all for D&D &D again and different names and different places, place names that I could use and different maps. I went on a, a place called Donjon which does these uh, wonderful random dungeons. And I printed off a load of those and, and had those ready to hand just in case. And most of that stuff I never used, but I was glad it was there. And actually in more modern terms, a couple of six o'clock clubs ago, I, I some people might recall me saying, I don't remember the rules of combat or what the actions in combat for D&D 5th Ed. I don't, I don't remember what they are, but that's because I have a GM screen now. Years ago, that was a physical screen I'd have, and you'd have all the stuff on the inside. But now for running things online, I have my tabs. I've got, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky. I've got three monitors in front of me, and I can have one with the game and one with, with all the things I need and one with, with all the other things I need. And I can, I prepare by having the tabs open for the fifth edition status conditions, fifth edition actions in combat. Because despite playing it, I'll never remember. So... I'm always trying to make sure I'm prepared for the things I don't know and have things to hand that I think I might need. And sometimes you might be one session in before you get to that. Um, and, and don't be worried to say to your players, if you if they go somewhere that you haven't prepared for, or if they start to you know do something that you really, you, you're not, not ready for, you don't be frightened to say no or say, Okay, thank you, right? We'll have to hold it there because I need to prepare for where you're going to. It's absolutely valid to cut a session half an hour, an hour short to say, hey, this is great. You've gone somewhere new. I want to give you the best possible experience. We're going to call it there and we'll get back together next time and you can explore that and I'll have it wonderfully prepared for you. Mm -hmm. Don't ever be worried to say that. And if you have a group that ever complains at you for that, 
that's probably not a great group. Um, and that's probably my next bit of advice. That's, Matt. that's very good. Yeah, um, and I can build on that slightly, I think. Um, it will give my uh, add my tuppence to that. And uh, But one particular thing is there is, I found it ages ago, um, and this is a very specific to 5th edition, but I found, I think it, it was either Drive Through RPG or DMs Guild. It was a free PDF, and it's basically all of the content of the Dungeon Master screen on an A4 page. Yeah. So that just on the desk is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> just no, as a quick to hand thing um so that's useful um i think yeah i think christian's very right in in everything he said there and and kind of my my addition to it i guess would be also trust yourself and remember that you are the gm and you are the GM because either because everybody's gone, would you do this for us? Or you've invited them to join a game that you want to run. And they've gone, yes, we would like you to run the game. So you are running the game. And I think in there are moments, and I've had them a number of times, where I'm still, you know, there are still rules I don't get. Or there are interpretations of rules about jumping and stuff like that. Jumping in 5e still baffles me. Because is it movement? Is it movement? Do you do it on top of? Do you do it now? I don't know. Um, and a couple of times those moments come up, and particularly if they come up in a in the middle of a complicated inter like role play interaction, or if they come up in the middle of combat, sometimes people, you know, three or four different people are shouting different ideas out at the table. You're the GM. You are within your rights to go. Right. This is woolly. For the purposes of now, this is what's going to happen, and you make the call because it's your call to make and and that can be this is what we'll do this time it may not be right but it feels right to me and i will take it offline and i will check and be right and be solid in my knowledge for next time yeah because no. it's you know ultimately this is about everybody having fun at the table and not interrupting the flow you know yeah. and and you can make a call and don't be afraid to make a call i think is the most important thing and whether that's a case of yes, you can go to this place, or no, we need to close this session, or we need to finish this session now so I can go away and prepare. Or, you know, if you just don't know a thing, that's also okay. You know, because not everybody, you know, some of us, some people do this for a living. Um, one of our esteemed colleagues on screen does, but not everybody does. And if you're doing this as a hobby and you're just doing it for a bunch of mates, they should be forgiving. <laughs> because if yeah. you don't know, you don't know. And ultimately, it's a game. Everybody's there to have fun. So... Yeah, I think just don't be afraid to say, in any case, you know, we'll definitely do this. I'm not sure about this, but I'm going to call this for now kind of thing. I'm I'm waffling a bit now, so I'm going to stop. But, no, no, but no. I think that was mine. Uh, and, and sort of coming back to, to, to both of those points before I, I go on to another one. Um, absolutely, it's absolutely fine to go right we can't we can't move to that location at the moment because it's it's not prepared and i want to give you the best experience possible um there is there is literally nothing wrong with that at all um but what you can also do because this is collaborative collaborative storytelling is um when you are not sure about what is the best rule and there are multiple examples in uh fifth edition dungeons and dragons jumping is one illusions is another stealth is another the rules are not clear in any way shape or form um it's down to the gm to to basically go well what works best here and that can be an open conversation you can have with your players. Like, if it doesn't really make any kind of real difference, it's like, okay, what works best? What's going to be the coolest thing to happen here? Um, if you had worked it out in a certain way, um, then uh, as a storyteller, you can say, well, as as Matt just said, for the moment, we're going to run it like this. I will take what everybody has said on board and we might well um, uh, redefine the way that it works in future sessions. Um, and what is also important is to give the players a, 
a degree of agency as well. So um, it works best when it's something that uh, that is revolving around said character, uh, but it can it can work well outside of that, and that is to ask questions. So, um, for instance, uh, if one of the characters is visiting their their parents' home, for instance, and they haven't really written any backstory or anything, so there's no definitive answer to what it's like it's you don't have to make it up as a gem you can go right well what is your what is your parents house like or you can say what is your own house like if they go back to their own sort of apartments or accommodations but you can also you can share the load you know if they want to go and visit this place on the fly you can actually say to the players okay well you go in here what's it like uh, you know, what, what, not not in a not in an RC kind of. I haven't done it, so you're going to do all the work. But let's build it together. Let's make this really cool together, um, and that works because the players suddenly feel like, wow, this is a cool place because it's got some of my ideas in, uh, and it, it, it's it's a really nice collaborative way of of, of world building. Um, and then you can take those ideas, take them away with you. A next session you can have built onto that and, and, and brought it back. Um, we are beginning to run out of time. So um, I'm going to throw in another one, which I think is, is important. That we're not covered yet, which is listen. Uh, always listen to the conversations that your characters are having, both in and out of character. Um, they might come up with some really cool ideas. Um, that might come up with some really stupid ideas that you kind of want to go, right, I need to do something to stop them um, <laughs> going elsewhere. Uh, Stuart says, uh, yeah, he's got a bespoke, magnificent mansion, um, which we, <laughs> we won't go into. We're still below the watershed at the moment. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, listen, listen to the conversations that are being had. Um, you're not cheating. You're not going, oh, that's a good idea, but it's there, so I can't use it. Um, it's cooperative. Uh, whatever makes it the most fun for around the table with everybody. Uh, that's that's the, the aim of the game is for everybody to have a great time. And uh, if you think that one of the players or one of their characters has come up with an ace idea, incorporate it, embrace it. Um, and they might go, oh, told you so. Uh, it's like, well, um, kind of. <laughs> you, you kind of did tell me, but only like two minutes ago because it didn't exist before. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. But it, it, it's about uh, fulfilling that joy and that, that fun around the table. So always, always listen. Um, have we got enough time for... Uh, and another couple, uh, Christian. Have you got anything else? I have two quick fire ones. Yeah, go for it. And and again, this is more focusing on you as a person, uh -huh. um, and not so much on the players because we've given a lot of advice about you know how to run, effectively run a game and and, run, and and manage a story. But one, decompress afterwards. Give yourself time to let the story just and everything that's happened wash over you. And two, if you feel comfortable, get feedback. Because good feedback really helps. Help me. Help me a lot having a couple of players that were really friendly and could just say, I hated that bit. I like that bit. I didn't like that. I didn't get that. And yeah, that was me. Yeah. No, that's two very, very strong, strong uh, suggestions as well. Matt, have you got anything else that you want to want to add before we bring today's club to an end um don't feel that you have to if you've got nothing that's pressing it's up to you it's, it's more an expansion on i think what you've both already said and yeah. it's that listening and work with and what's really nice about um taking if you're using something that's pre-written taking it very much as a leaping off point and making it your own because that's sort of that was the philosophy behind a lot of tabletop role playing games to begin with and i think embracing that is important and also bringing your players on that journey i know that the 
the campaign that I run um, with my kind of regular group of players has been running for three years now in a in a homebrew world which didn't it existed as a map with not a great deal on it. Now it's you know a sprawling continent with a bunch of cities and and an entire organization which was partly the brainchild of one of my players who wanted yeah. to be a monk from this order and had some ideas and then kind of went, I thought I'd give it to you and then we see what happens. And between us, we've worked out it's an entire faction now that you could write a source book on. Yeah. Um, and what's lovely about that is my players have agency within the story as players in, in and characters in this story. But as a, as players at the table, they also know that the world that we are playing in collaboratively and collectively, they've got as much influence on as yeah. I have. Because you know the, the the plot that they're now doing is not a plan I had from the very beginning. It's it's responded to everything they've done so far and has been born out of a couple of random instances that they don't realise. And that's that's the joy of it. And I think be excited about those opportunities. Um, they can be intimidating at times, but ultimately, you know, you are a group of friends at a table telling a story together. And I think bring them on that journey with you as a storyteller as well. Um, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, great point. Very well made. Um, okay. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not in, entirely sure whether I'm running a game tonight or not, but at seven o'clock, I need to be at the table just in case. Um, so it's been fascinating. Uh, genuinely uh, well done on your Kickstarter. It looks amazing. I can't wait to, to get it. Um, thank you very much, everybody in chat for... Um, being part of tonight's club i hope you found the the conversation uh interesting and um informative and useful really um let us know what you think jack has posted some other things in discord for us to chat uh tomorrow we have got uh chris from evil pigeon games that will be talking about uh, his publication so i'm very excited to have a chat with chris um, tune in if you can uh, but for now it's goodbye from me and matt do you want to say uh, thank you very much for your time take it easy guys have uh, a good one and christian stay away from my house uh, it's got a boiler now. Um, <laughs> hot water. So, yeah, thank you very much again. Take care. Look after each other and yourselves. Have a great evening. I will hopefully see you all tomorrow at six o'clock. See you later. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.